Oh, testing, testing, you can see my, hey, you say now. Okay, so let's continue with another video. Okay, now this is a past three of our chapter 21 video in which this time we are going to look at some basic definitions of the general price level and more specifically about inflation and deflation. So let's get started. Okay, now let's go to page eight. Now here you see, now, how come we are very interested in looking at general price level? Because remember, general price level is something that would directly affect our so-called real purchasing power. With more or less purchasing power, our standard of living would be affected. Now, let me give you one simple example to illustrate what I'm talking about. Here, let's go. Now here, you see, now imagine Imagine, okay, now we have $100, okay, now, originally, okay, in the old case, very old case would be uh, this time, let's say Big Mac, let's say Big Mac, let's say Big Mac, originally cost $50, <coughs> now therefore, with that $100, I can buy two Big Mac. Now unfortunately, let's say there is an, uh, a serious inflation such that Big Mac later become a uh, $200 instead. So what would happen is that my income didn't change. I only have a hundred how many Big Macs can I buy? Zero. You see, right? Originally, I can eat two Big Mac. Because of the change in general price level, I can eat nothing right now. So you see, right? From this example, we can see, now this is very important, you need to remember this. Higher the price level, it means that our purchasing power our real purchase, or I should say, our real purchasing power would go down. Okay, you need to remember this. Now, this is why we are interested in studying the general price level. Now, in Hong Kong, there are two ways to look at the general price level of Hong Kong. Okay, now, I think you have heard of one of them. Now, one of them is called the CPI. In Chinese, 消費者物價指數啊. Okay, now another one, we have learned this in uh, GDP. We call it the GDP deflator. Okay, now we are not going into the mathematical parts of these two. Okay, now let's quickly look at what these tools are. Okay, now here, CPI first. Now what is CPI? CPI, it's more targeted towards household. More on household or our consumers. Now we are most interested in looking at consumers, how their goods are being affected by the price level. Okay. Now, for example, for example, you see, on average, uh, the Hong Kong consumers they buy a lot of rice, and then buy a lot of drinks, etc. A lot of daily necessities that they need to buy. So CPI would find the goods that are popular among the households and would assign some weighting to those goods. For example, okay, for example, let's say uh, Coca-Cola is the most popular. Therefore, Coca-Cola will be counted more in the CPI. Uh, also, let's say rice. Uh, Nike. Let's say your your Air Jordan. Nike. The shoes. Right? Maybe not as important. Now, therefore, the weighting of shoes in CPI would be lower. Okay. Then the CPI is like this. Now, compared to GDP deflator, is quite different because. GDP deflator, okay, now nah, basically this one is the C. GDP deflator, we are talking about C 
I G N N X. CPI is focused on the C. GDP deflator, all goods. So we are not just interested in consumer, but we are also interested in, let's say, firms, not just household, firms and government, right? We look at all goods in GDP, all goods. Now also a minor difference, remember, GDP only current years, but CPI, they usually took an average of several years. Okay, so current and past. Okay, they do not care whether the goods bought that year. Okay, uh, whether the goods bought in that year is made that year or not. Now CPI doesn't care what year you buy it. While GDP only counts goods that are produced in the current year. Okay, how much? Now, this is this conceptual dif conceptual difference. Not a lot, right? Now, in general, CPI varies less. While the GDP deflator, the weighting of product may varies quite a lot because you know every year the economy may focus on different things. So they need to adjust. Ah, uh, as opposed to consumer. Those are consumer, not being it, ma. Uh, I like drinking Coca Cola. Then I will keep on drink, drinking Coca Cola. Wouldn't change a lot, right? Now, so CPI is more targeted towards the so-called cost of living. Hi, all the guys. Wait, don't forget you. Our life expenses are more on the cost of living. While GDP deflator, it's more about the so-called big general price level. Not just about cost of living, but cost of everything. Okay. So these are the conceptual differences. Now here in page five of your textbook, you will also see CPI further broken down into CPI A, B, C, and composite CPI. Now I'm not going to waste your, waste your time here. Okay, not going to waste your time here. The the basically it says the poor, the middle class, and the rich people, they have different CPI, right? Now just see it, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste time. Alright, now. Let's look at some examples, some past paper examples of how it will be in examination, right? Now here, 2008, again, the year that I, take my, I took my CE exam, right? Now here, given you CPI, CPI A, right? CPI A. Now, the important thing is that you see CPI from 99 to 102. So what do we call this? We see that the price level has been increasing. This is an inflation. Now they may go no inflation. Okay, now very soon. This is an inflation. Now, based on the above paper, we can conclude that during that period, let's see. Now, first one, per capita nominal GDP has increased. Now remember, we talk about CPI, we talk about GDP deflator. We are only talking about price level. We do not know anything about nominal GDP. Oh quite GDP single we are only concerned with price level, not GDP. Okay, so not A. Now B, living standard has worsened. Whenever you see living standard, remember, figure, if you only look at figure, you can draw no conclusion because we don't know problems like pollution. Do we know anything about pollution? No. Do we know anything about, let's say, leisure time? No, no, we do not know. So it's a big question mark. See, the cost of living has increased. Yes, CPI increased, meaning the cost of living has increased. Okay, so that would be C. Now, next one. Let's see next one. Now, next one. 2009. Now, when the consumer price index increases 10%, what does that mean? Immediately, it means cost of living has increased. Yet you yeah. Now, but the more important is actually A. A says the price of all consumer goods involved in the calculation has increased by ten percent. Now, what is wrong with this? Uh, what with this option? The thing wrong is all. Remember, CPI is a weighted average. So we are saying, on average, it has increased by 
but not necessarily all goods has increased by ten percent. Okay, 係平均升咗嗱。Same as 誒、uh, let's say when I tell you the average mark for our let's say economic exam has increased. Does that mean every one of you has higher marks? No, it only means that on average you have increased in your marks, but not every single one. 得唔得？嗱，平均嚟嘅啫。So A is not correct. Now let's look. Let's also look at C and D. Now C, living standard. How do I know? How do I know anything about living standard? Right? Now and D, nominal income. 我有講 income 咩？ I only talk about price level. Did I talk about income? No, both are big question mark. Number. So next one, quickly. Now you see, this gym floor, 全部都唔係好難嘅啫啲嘢。Now next one, 2014 in DSE. 你話啦 ，Do we need to under? Do we need to recite the differences between CPI and GDP deflator? Yes, you need to because it will ask. Explain one difference between C CPI and GDP in measuring the change in price level. 誒自己啦 ，copy from textbook. OK， 自己抄書啦，好嘛 ？Copy from textbook. 唔講啦，唔嘥時間。All right. So that will be an introduction to the term so-called general price level. How do we measure general price level? Now next, we are going to talk about specifically inflation and deflation. OK， 嗱 ，in Chinese inflation 通脹 ，deflation 通縮。OK， 嚟啦噃。Now what exactly is inflation and what exactly is deflation? Inflation refers to a persistent increase in general price level. Now very important. We are talking about persistent, continuous. OK， persistent, continuous. You need to have a continuous increase in price level to be a Inflation. Now, as opposed to one-off, sometimes you see there will be some one-off increase or decrease in price. No, one-off cannot be regarded as inflation or deflation. Now, for example, typhoon, 逢亲打风啦 Whenever there is a typhoon, what would happen to the prices of vegetables? 啲菜一定会好贵系咪啊？打风打烂晒嘛 But but can you say because of the typhoon? There is an inflation. No, because typhoon usually, usually, okay, is only a one-off change. 通常一次嘅啫，變一下嘅啫。Not a persistent, continuous change. Okay, 嗱得唔得？呢個緊要嘅。嗱 ，here inflation rate. How do we calculate inflation rate? Very easy. We use new price index, 新嘅 price index. Minus old price index, 新減價，除價 divided by old price index times a hundred percent. Mathematics, basically mathematics. Okay, so what is this price index? Now, this price index, right? This PI can either be CPI or GDP deflator. Either one will do. 是打個都得噶啦，係咪？睇題目俾邊個你 ？CPI 又得 ，GDP deflator 又得。OK， depending on what the question has given to you. Remember, new minus old divided by old. 新減舊除舊啦，照舊啦。This is a mathematical relationship. OK， 好嘛 ？Now, more important is actually you need to recognize inflation and deflation using So-called graphs or from table. 嗱，呢個先係最緊要噶。Okay, now here I've given you two shapes. Okay, now here two shapes. Year one, year two, year three. Now let's look at price index first. Here, ninety-two to ninety-four to one hundred three. You see price index increasing. Increasing price index. Now therefore, this is an inflation. OK， 好嘛？呢、这個 inflation 嚟嘅。Another one， this one， year one， year two， year three。嗱 ，look at it， two percent， three percent， one percent
，has it dropped？ No， remember 嗱呢个讲咗 n 咁多次噶啦 ，this is changed。As long as it is a positive number， 只要佢正数啫，咩意思啊 ？It means it is also increasing every year， 每年都升紧，因为每年都系正数。So this is also an inflation. Okay, we have talked about this in our GDP chapter. Okay, not going to repeat myself. Now, the most difficult one is actually with graph. You know that graph 系最难画噶。好嘛，嗱，不如畫大啲啊，喺後面好嘛。嗱 ，let me draw a bigger one for you. Here, let's see. Now, first one, there are two graphs that you need to know. First graph, now obviously this is time. First graph, we look at it from the perspective of price index or price level. 呢個係睇 price level 啦。So when we talk about index, the middle would be 100, right? Would be 100. Above 100, below 100. Now here, let me draw you three curves. This is A. This is B. This is C. Remember, all three of these curves are all inflation. 點解啊 ？Why? Because curve A, curve B, curve C, all of them are going up in terms of price index. 得唔得？佢係向上斜啫，咩意思啊？即係 price level 同 price index 升緊。That's the only thing you need to look at. Okay, so whenever you see the y-axis being price index. When you see it's a price index or price level, okay, the only thing you look at is the slope of the graph. Okay, when it is upward sloping, then it is inflation. Downward sloping, it would be deflation. 冇啦。Whether it's above 100 or below 100 is irrelevant. Slope is the only thing that you look at. Okay, so let's complete、uh, this diagram. Okay, now by the same token, both this let's call it A1, B1, and C1. All of this would be deflation. For the simple reason that they are all downward sloping, because they are all going up, the price index is dropping. Okay, they are going up. So this is the first way we look at this diagram. Now, there is a second way to present this at、uh, this information. You know, the second way. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Another way of representing inflation deflation, which I think is the harder way. This time we are not talking about price index or price level. We are talking about percentage change in price level, the growth rate. Okay, now let me give you some curves. Okay, let me give you some curves. Then think about whether they're inflation or the ah. Obviously, this this will be zero, right? Yeah. Let me draw two curves. This is A. This is B.、Uh, and then this is C, and this is D. Remember, A and B. Are both inflation. C and D are both deflation. Why? You think this is inflation? Ah, this is downward sloping. But the important thing is that the rate of change is 
positive. Now, therefore, when you see in a graph, we are talking about percentage change in, <coughs> in price level. Then, the thing that you need when we talk about percentage change, the thing you need to look at is whether it is positive or negative. Positive is inflation. Negative is deflation. 我哋睇佢边个 region 啊 ？OK， not slope. We are looking at region. 系咪？我睇佢系边个 region 咯 ？Positive region here. Positive region, inflation. Negative region, deflation. The slope is irrelevant. Irrelevant. OK， 唔关事嘅得唔得？ So you see, I think this is more. This is the counterintuitive one, 係嘛？呢個係難啲㗎，因為呢個其實有啲 counterintuitive 㗎，係嘛 ？But it is the way that you should look at it. Okay, 得唔得 ？Now let's also talk about graph B. 嗱 ，graph B. One final word, and then we end this video, right? Now one final word is that graph B. This curve, we give it a name. Graph B is an example. We call it disinflation. 通脹放緩 Okay. Now remember, disinflation is also an inflation. It only means that inflating at a slower rate. 係嘛？越升越慢。佢唔係跌緊啦，係越升越慢。It's increasing at a Decreasing rate. 得唔得 ？So this is it. Now remember, 睇多次啦。Now this video, we talk about some、uh, very simple definitions. The most important one is actually inflation, right? Now, when you see the graph, the y-axis is price index or price level. You look at the slope. When it is percentage change. You look at the region. Okay, 得唔得？好緊要嘅呢樣嘢。All right, so that will be an introduction to inflation and deflation. So in next video, we are going to spend some time to talk about a very important equation. We call it the Fisher's equation. 走咗位啊，唔好意思啊。Okay, we are going to look at. Fisher's equation. So until then, see you again next time. Bye bye.